Brother against brother. Winner goes free. Fight to the death. Episode 309 was called The Suicide King. And both leaders, Rick and the governor, are dealing with some type of trauma. They're approaching some type of emotional breakdown. The governor's in a terrible state, both physically and emotionally. He's a man who's got nothing to lose. Don't do this. Don't do this. The very fact that the governor would turn on his own man, Merle, the man is showing who he is. And it's a big wake-up call for Andrea. Me and my brothers up the creek without a paddle. This might be it. We're going to die. As an audience, we've never seen these two characters coexist. They haven't been together in almost a year, and it's instantly, how are we going to get out of this? It's a long shot to try and rescue Daryl. The priority is to get out of Woodbury as quickly as possible. When the arena is attacked, I think he almost enjoys it. He doesn't care what happens to him, and he doesn't care what happens to Woodbury. You're not going anywhere with us. You really want to do this now? The compromise that he feels. He doesn't know what's gone down between Daryl and Merle. He doesn't really know their relationship. All he knows is the guy that he left on a rooftop is back, and they have to get out. What? Rick. As Maggie's coming back to where Michonne and Glenn are, she knows that Glenn is going to fly off the handle. What the hell is he doing? Hey, 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 he only has vengeance on his mind. The person that he wants to take it out on is definitely the governor, but Merle is there. Get that thing out of my face! <laughs> he tried to kill Michonne. Michonne wants him dead. Glenn wants him dead. That first meeting scene is incredibly tense, and it could go many, many different ways. The governor's probably on the way to the prison right now. Merle knows how he thinks, and we could use a muscle. Merle is actually very, very useful to the group, but he's going to be such a compromise. There's no way Merle's gonna live there without putting everyone at each other's throats. Maggie very much believes that Merle shouldn't be a member of the group. She understands what Daryl's going through, and this is not an easy situation. Merle, Merle's blood. No, Merle is your blood. It's this really great dual idea of what really is family. Is family just blood? Or is family the people that surround you that have your back? No him, no me. Daryl, you don't have to do that. Daryl's been looking for his brother all this time, so I have to make a choice between Merle and Michonne and Glenn. Don't ask me to leave him. I did that once. When Daryl decides to leave, the whole group just ends up feeling really pulled apart, and it's a very sad unraveling for all of us, but we don't know that we can trust Merle. We patch you up, and then you are gone. In a sense, there's a relief that, okay, that issue of Merle is gone, and Michonne believes that this man will eventually take her in. Shoving a gun in their face won't help. Where's the governor? He's There's a riot out here. Come on. You're making things worse. The governor is MIA. People are panicked. They need their leader to come and tell them everything's okay. <laughs> the people in that town are very ill-equipped to deal with the zombie apocalypse. This is the first time that the safe haven has been breached. Woodbury is no longer the little Mayberry world of the zombie apocalypse. The governor's coming out a little bit more like the governor that I've been waiting for. Not so much with this Mr. Nice Guy stuff. It really tells the audience something's different with this guy, and what's coming next is gonna be crazy, and you have no idea what to expect. You think the governor will retaliate? Yes. Beth's really attached to the baby, and she's really concerned for the baby's safety. She feels like we should run before they attack. We could use some reinforcements. Herschel realizes that you need a group of people to survive in this apocalypse. Herschel said you could use some extra hands. We're no stranger to hard work. We'll go out and get our own food, stay out of your hair. After casting the prisoners away and some of them turning out to be really good guys, we do know that we need to be open-hearted enough to bring some people in. I think that Therese and Sasha and Alan are good people. No. Please. It's like 10 little Indians out there. It's just us now. 
in this case, the suicide king can refer to Rick. He knows at this point that the governor is going to probably seek revenge on the prison. These are some strong survivors that could help them, but he makes a suicidal choice to turn them away. No. Let's talk about this. Seeing the good in humanity is a much harder thing to do when the cost to you could be so high. You've got to start giving people a chance. The incredible pressure he's under from Woodbury, from the new arrivals, from losing so many people, all accumulates. It's almost like he short circuits. Rick is traumatized. He hasn't slept for three days since the death of Laurie. He's not in the best of, of states, to be honest. Get out! Oh, well, it's all good. Rick is on the verge of no return. He's breaking down. He's spiraling out of control. What? Let's go. Just go, go. This is when the group needs him the most. And the governor's coming for him. And he's coming at the exact moment that Rick is at his weakest. All new episodes, Sunday nights at 9, only on AMC. For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com.